Hello YouTube and welcome back again to another theatrical horror film review. I'm Felagar reviewing for the Horror Globe. I saw Carrie uh, the remake. Now I know it's just pulling strings. I don't know what the hell that film is pulling strings. But the reason why she did that because she basically uh, fucked up something about uh, the time was different. See, so notice how she X that out 12. It's really in auditorium 17. So this is the wrong ticket stub. But it matters not because on tomorrow I'll get a correct uh, ticket stub when I go see it again. And, uh, and there we go. And I can add it to the product collection of ticket stubs that I have. Huh, yeah. So it's kind of weird I collect this shit, right? So, anyways, okay, so there we go. I don't even know why I'm bothering showing that. It's the wrong fucking ticket stub, but it was for Carrie, the remake, the 2013 one. And um, starring the very talented Chloe Grace Moretz and the always wonderful and gorgeous uh, and immortal. Uh, uh, Julianne Moore. Um, I'm trying to think who else starred in it. Anyone famous that I am aware of? And no. No. And I saw this with my brother uh, yesterday uh, in the afternoon. And um, I have to tell you. Okay. Um, I'm going to get it right off the bat. I'm going to start off like this and say that uh, when dealing with the 2013 carry and the, the 1976 carry, um, there were some subtle differences. The basic premise plot was still the same, but the characters, uh, the names were all the same and everything, but the way they went about certain things was different. And I would say right off the bat that there were things about the 1976 film that I enjoyed more than the 2013, but then at the same time there were elements of the 2013 film that I really enjoyed more than uh, the the original 1976 Brian De Palma one. I forgot who directed this one. Uh, Kathleen Lazowski, Lebowski, or some, something like that. She directed something else. I can't remember what. Yeah, but in any case, um, so there's that. Um, okay. Okay, so I got that out of the way. There might be some minor spoilers, but that will come at the end. I'm going to give my score, and I'm going to, I'm going to notify you guys when I'm going to start talking about spoilers. So you can actually stop the uh, the video if you don't want to get into any of that. Okay, so like I said, I saw it with my brother yesterday. And what's nice about this, it opens up the opening shot, whereas if you watched my first uh, Carry One review, uh, it opened up at a volleyball game and then into the shower. Well, in here, it opens up with the birth of Carrie, where uh, Margaret White is actually in bed um, giving herself a uh, uh, a, a self a self uh, a do it yourself birth I don't know how else you call it you know she's basically doing it herself she's not um, going to the hospital for this she's inducing labor herself let's put it that way in the bed oh, oh you know all the pain and everything at first I was wondering what the fuck is going on where's your blood I thought didn't quite get it. I thought maybe they were starting at the end of the film or something, but I know. And then that's when you realize, you know, you get the beautiful shot of the camera basically like up here on her chest right there, aiming down. Her legs are spread. She's wearing one of those nightgowns and you see the baby kind of moving underneath her skirt thing and then she pulls it up. You see the baby. This really showcases how, how mad the woman is right off the bat. She takes a pair of scissors and thinks it's like a tumor or a cancer or something and goes to stab the baby, stops it like right like a hair away from the baby's face. And it's such an adorable, cute little baby. What the fuck you want to do that? So anyway, she changes her mind and basically nurses uh, the child and, and I guess in her untwisted way grows to love the child. Um, jumps ahead uh, where it's in a pool and um, you see... Uh, you see Carrie White, and she's in the corner. You know, they're going to play water volleyball in, you know, in the school gym in the pool area. And the ball's coming, you know, just like how the first one starts off with the volleyball game. But this one, it's a pool volleyball, water volleyball, whatever you call it. The ball's coming to her and goes, oh, yeah, go ahead, Carrie. Go ahead. Hit it. Hit it. And then she just sits there, just stands there, and then it, she misses it. And it lost a point and it lost the game. So they're all pissed. You fucking bitch. You know, you fucking eat shit. All that stuff. A lot of the dialogue can be pretty similar. And um, so they just don't like her. And uh, now comes shower time. Again, just like in the first one. And just like the first one. Um, of course, no nudity because these are actual kids now. Okay? So, whereas in the first carry, there were adults already of age of 18. 
uh, playing uh, teenagers. So the you know they were able to do that. Uh, still being a rated R movie though. Okay, this movie was by the way about an hour and fifty four minutes. Yeah. So anyways, um, same thing. You know she gets a period, and she runs out and she's you know has a tower on her, so you don't see anything. Of course, she's only sixteen, folks. How? Oh. Oh, and they're all laughing at her, telling her to eat shit, starts throwing tampons, of course, just like in the first one, and they start taking, uh, it was actually uh, uh, Chris Harginson, she's like the head bitch, uh, uh, taking a video of this uh, through her phone, her cell phone, and Carrie is uh, kind of um, uh, cowering away, you know, clutching her towel over her body, you know, into the shower area, and they're throwing tampons, and she's crying out in pain and you know she's scared mentally and all that and um she's filming it and then of course oh judy greer i'm sorry judy greer from uh, 13 going on 30 that's the other notable actress uh in there she's playing the gym teacher she comes out and just like in the first one puts a stop to this and yells at everyone um talks has a talk to, with carrie takes her up to the principal and it's just a funny scene because they're going through you're having your uh, period and the principal's like oh you know, he sees the blood on on the shorts, and he's like, "It's like, oh, you know, maybe maybe this is just a, a discussion for the ladies. I'll just leave. No, no, no. You have to stay here." And she doesn't want to do it. We have to call your mother. What? No, 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 no. We don't have to call my mother. This is just giving. We're gonna have to call your mother. She's like, "Fuck." In comes again, Margaret White, and she's pissed that she had a period, thinking, "You know what?" Kind of goes into more detail on why she's pissed, actually, because she's come into womanhood. First comes the blood, then comes the boys. And now that I come to think of it, yeah, it did mention that uh, in the 76. First comes the blood, then comes the boys. But I guess it was, it to me, it just it was made more clear in this one. So anyway, so there ensues the argument, and the first thing was in the course. And just say it with me. But in, unlike the first one, the original one, the first thing was in the course. She was more like, um, she was very, uh, um, she could, uh, uh, she was vocalizing quite quite well, like kind of not not too much, uh, like uh, I don't know what it is, but she's more like and, and reading the Bible. She was really into it, and God said, and Eve was a sinner, and he goes, I'm not Eve, and the first sin was intercourse. Say it, say it with me now. The first sin was intercourse. Like okay, yes, Mama. The first sin was intercourse. Okay, now go to your closet and pray. So she goes and prays, and you know it's a different kind of cross, not as creepy, not nearly as creepy as the first one. She's got like photos and stuff in her closet. She ends up falling asleep in there. Um, what's great too, uh, whoever the actress who was playing Sue Snell, she's blonde in this one where, and, um, and, uh, uh, Chris Harginson is actually, uh, dark haired. So it's kind of like a flip almost. So anyways, um, uh, Sue Snell is feeling really sorry for what she has done and in the middle of uh, basically screwing Tommy Ross her boyfriend in his car in the backseat it was not really a car it was a uh, a jeep basically and so they're doing it and then um, she says you know what Tommy I want you to do me a favor I want you to go out with uh, with uh, Carrie White take her out to prom I can't go you know I'm screwed because um, you know I forgot to mention, you know, of course, there was the punishment, uh, and Carrie didn't want to give up the name of uh, Chris Harginson because she felt maybe there might be some retaliation involved, I suppose. So um, it was the gym teacher who, uh, you know, made the kids do exercises as a punishment for detention. That's what it was. And, of course, Chris Harginson, walking out of it, said, you know what, F uh, what is it? Oh, fuck you, you cunt, or something like that is what she said to her. And go, what? What did you say to me? Like, you can't fucking make me do this and blah, blah, blah. This isn't over. Not by a long shot. Almost word for word from um, a word for word as in the original one. I, I recall that. Not by a long shot. And she stormed on out of there. So anyways, so Sue Snell is feeling very sorry for, for Carrie and asks uh, Tommy, her boyfriend. Um, she made it seem like more of Tommy and uh, Sue Snell were boyfriend, girlfriend in this one versus the other one, the original. It seemed like they were just, uh, they were just buds. So in any case, because of course they were screwing in this one, and you, you know, so um, so at first reluctantly, okay, no, I'm gonna go with you. Well, you can't, you know, I just go out with this girl. You know, she deserves to go to prom. Okay, fine. So same basic thing. First, Tommy asks uh, Tommy Ross asks uh, Carrie White to go to the prom. Uh, with him and he turns and she turns him down 
Um, so Carrie goes to the gym and, and or in the, in the locker room and she's crying. And of course, the gym teacher goes up to her and says, you know, why are you crying? What's, what's wrong? I just been asked by Tommy Ross. He wants to take me out to prom. What do I want to do? Oh, that's wonderful. Tommy Ross. And I know she's with Sue Snell and I know what crowd that they hang out with. It's okay, you know. You should say yes. Whatever. So after that talk, she ambushes uh, Tommy Ross and uh, Sue Snell. If you have some kind of trick you're playing to uh, to uh, uh, Carrie, this stops now. No, there's no trick. Okay, this is just between us. Isn't it, Tommy? Yes, this is just between Carrie and me. Besides, it doesn't matter. She already said no. So you'll ask again. And then the gym teacher, no, you won't. Yes, you will. So whatever. So he ends up uh, still pursuing this because they're, you know, I guess you kind of get the feeling that, you know, it's being sincere. Uh, now he even, now Tommy Ross even tries to go to ambush Carrie in the house. Uh, basically, she carries like, you know, walking home. Oh, and you know, one little crucial thing I forgot to mention. How the fuck I forget to mention this very, very, very crucial part. Uh, she's coming to terms with her telekinesis because at first, and this is what I liked about this one, whereas, you know, versus the original. In there, the whole, in the original one, her powers seem to be explosive. Whenever strong emotions would, would she would be filled with these strong emotions, it would just uh, come out, you know, the powers would just come out uncontrollably. In here, it starts off like that, and then she's starting to become more aware. Wait a minute. Carrie's thinking, am I doing this? So then she starts practicing. When she shatters the mirror, she starts moving the glass a little bit. She's like, she's got this grin on her face. Oh, you know, <coughs> excuse me. I am so sorry. I am so, so sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize, folks. Oh, I can do something no one else can. No one ain't going to be fucking with me no more. Mm -hmm. She's thinking that now. Um, so then she's going to the library, looking up on the internet. She's quite bad at it. She has to look over the kid, how to kind of do it, looking up uh, magic powers and stuff like that, and things things of that nature. She's getting books on magic, magic powers, um, telekinesis, and um, she even is watching a video on YouTube of, a, of this hand, as, uh, 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 this person uh, with a book. You know, it's open. It shows a book like this, and he just has, has his hand like this, and he's flipping the pages without even touching it. Just And then Carrie's got this. She's like... Well, you know, like, you know, she's really, really amazed at that, you know, and I just love that, you know, she has this glow about her and it's just fantastic. And, and, um, she's, you know, a very adorable girl, you know, this, this actress and the way she, um, um, uh, uh, presented this character of Carrie is, is, I loved it, you know, she really conveyed the character very well and brought out all these emotions from someone who's really super shy to someone really, really being amazed and, and glad to have these powers, and I, I really like that. Uh, so, yeah, so anyways, uh, also I wanted to get back to before Tommy Ross am was, you know, ambushing uh, Carrie at the house. Um, they're in class, in poetry class or something, or English class. She's looking out the window, she's like this, and looking up at the flag, the U.S. flag, and she's trying to manipulate it, I guess. But all of a sudden, Carrie White, do you have a poem? She looks, you know, eyes up front now in class. So she goes up there and reads a poem. And everyone's like laughing at her and the teacher's laughing at her. And here's the thing. I think the teacher's having an affair with, uh, or basically fucking one of his students. And that's a no-no. Because, you know, this one uh, student is basically sucking on a pen and smiling at him and kind of flirting with the teacher. And the teacher, like, he just smiles back and, you know. So anyways, uh, he's like, oh, Carrie, you know, this is the first, and the teacher's being an asshole. This is the first time you've ever spoken, and that was really weird. And then Tommy Ross goes, asshole, you know, for being an asshole to Carrie. He goes, Tommy, what was that? You say something? What? I said, awesome. I said, uh, that was an awesome poem. Don't you think so, professor? I was like, yeah, you know, covered up. Asshole, awesome. So anyways, getting back to the ambushing. So he goes to ambush her, and Carrie White stops him before he goes to ring the doorbell. But really, no one's home because the mother's still coming home from work, and that was a nice thing. You actually see what Margaret White does for a living. She's basically a, a seamstress or a tailor, you know. That's what she does. So she wants a shop. She's quite good at sewing, by the way. Uh, so anyways, um, so she says, you know, what, what are you doing here? I said, I'm going to ask you out for prom, and uh, I'm not going to leave until you say until you say yes. So she's looking as, as the cars are driving by, hoping, praying to God her mom doesn't come home. So finally, she says, okay, fine, okay. I'll go. If it'll make you leave, I'll go. Okay, fine. I'll pick you up at 7. Okay, fine. Cool. 
So she's been asked, and she tells her mom. Mom gets pissed, says, you know what? They're just going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. And Carrie White um, even is making her own dress. It's great stuff. Oh, and I really love how they showcase the powers. I mean, she really, she levitated the whole living room, levitated her mom to basically, you know, as a, you know, as a vulgar display of power, basically, to kind of show, like, now things are going to change now. I'm the one in control. I'm the one in you know, it has a power, you know, because she's been practicing up in a room, making her bed float while she was on it, making her books float and just special effects were great, fantastic. I, I absolutely enjoyed it. And uh, of course, you know, it's not just because of the effects, but it's the character that drives these effects that really make for a wonderful uh, experience. You know, it's Chloe, Chloe's um, uh, acting and, and the way she uh, 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 carries herself in this in this film and, and 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 conveys conveys the feelings of uh, um, see, I I don't know what the words I'm looking for here but you know it's basically the way how she uh, how she plays the character of Carrie just sells sells everything you know so anyways um, the mother's pleading to her don't don't go um, and she's like you know what mama I'm gonna go and there's nothing you can do to stop me and you're gonna let me go and things are gonna change around here um, and uh, Oh, yeah. Oh, pink. Oh, red. I should have known it was going to be red. It's pink, Mama. Quick, quickly. Take that dress off now. We'll burn it together and pray. It's like, no. You should be happy for me. Um, he goes, oh, here's the boy. I'm going to tell him right now. You were born out of sin. You know, you were born because I was raped. He goes, no, you're not going to say that. She levitates the mom and shuts your mouth up telekinetically. So she's like, Ooh. can't open her mouth. And, and, and force pushes her into the closet and uh, shuts the door. Now, here's what's interesting. I think her powers go a little bit beyond uh, telekinesis because the lock on the door, she slides the lock and she does something when she looks at it and heats up and, and she basically um, uh, seals it like through through heat. So I don't know what was going on there. So that was kind of cool. I think she's more akin to the Jedis. Well, in her case, the Sith, which I'm all for the Sith. So anyways, of course comes prom night. You know, Tommy picks her up. Um, using a uh, uh, a limo, and um, and in the prom night scene, it, it was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. You know, I I like the you know the whole thing, little conversations and stuff like that. Maybe a little bit more touching with uh with the original one. You know, with Tommy there, uh, played by William Cat and Sissy Spacek. Maybe it was a little more a little bit more touching, I suppose. But I still enjoyed this one. Um, and here's the thing. Finally, I think we all know what happens. You know, the famous uh, blood scene. When that happens, um, uh, 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 who is it? Uh, Billy Nolan, and uh, which is uh, the boyfriend of... Uh, uh, um, I'm starting to forget the, these names now for some reason. Uh, Chris Harginson, okay? The bitch. And, and, and Billy Nolan, who apparently he goes to another school. They take off after the blood, you know, drops. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think, did he stay well? I think he stayed long enough to see the bucket fall on, on Tommy Ross's head, uh, killing him. And here's the beauty part. The blood, it, of course, it bothered her a bit. But, and the other thing I forgot to mention, um, uh, Chris Harginson put, put the, uh, that thing that she was filming with, uh, Carrie when she was having a period in the shower, put that up, she posted it up on YouTube. Okay, so if, if, as if that wasn't bad enough, okay, and then the blood wasn't bad enough, she, she was like kind of like, oh, blood on her hands. Then up on the big screen TVs on the left and right of them, big, big screen TVs, they put that video up of her when she was having a period again, where she's, you know, cowering away basically and cringing and, and, and clutching the towel on her and they're all throwing tampons on her. That video footage comes up, you know, left and right. And she's like, now... I'll be honest with you. She didn't seem like the type that would really just flip out on that. She would probably just would have cried, gone to the bathroom, washed off. In my personal opinion, and the way it looked like to me, was when she turned around and saw Tommy Ross dead, lying in the blood, that was a catalyst that set her off. She's like, no, Tommy. So that's when then she turned around and all hell breaks loose. She's like levitating herself. And, and all this calamity and, 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 and breaking off the, the, the cables and, the sh you know, shocking people. Um, you know, just everything 
was uh, went flying. There, there's even people getting two two females that were involved in this uh, were getting trampled to death. Loved it. Um, let me see. There was a there was a beheading, which was uh, quite beautiful. Um, uh, a woman who was set aflame and she burned to death that way. That was fantastic. Um, of course, you know, there were some innocent people that probably died, but unlike the first one where she really truly killed indiscriminately, I'll be honest with you, it looked as if she was targeting, I'll be honest with you, it really did look like she was targeting the ones that were involved in the same clique as uh, Chris Hugginson. Because now that I think about it, she wasn't really killing people. There might have been some accidents along the way. But she wasn't purposely killing people indiscriminately, actually. She was going for the ones involved in the clique and, you know, possible uh, assholes as well. Um, because when it came to the gym teacher, beautiful. She goes like this, does a force choke on her, and she's like, you know, Judy Greer's character. Then levitates her and just goes like that and then just throws her on the stage. Doesn't kill her. Unlike in the other one, the original, she kills her. She kills indiscriminately. Uh, in here, she was being somewhat selective. Um, so anyways, Chris Harginson and Billy Nolan, they take off in a car. And finally, uh, you see her, you see Carrie, you know, Aldrinson drenched in blood, walking out of the, you know, the school. And there were plenty of survivors, unlike the other one where everyone died. This one, plenty of survivors. More realistic that way, including the teacher, including, of course, Sue Snell. Which Sue Snell, by the way went on over there to uh, check out how it was going because she received a text message from Chris Harginson saying, like, uh, your friend Carrie White looks very pretty, not for much longer. So that's what prompted her to go. I forgot to mention that. Anyways, then Carrie turns and sees uh, Chris Harginson and Billy Nolan taken off in their car. And they're taken off and everything's on fire. There's all this calamity. Cops, uh, uh, um, what do you call those? Uh, uh, fire trucks and everything. So she follows them, you know, although you don't see it. They're at the light, uh, Billy Nolan and Chris Harginson. They're at the light. And when it turns green and they take off, because the camera's shot like this way in front of the car, when the car moves out of frame, it's Carrie behind the car just standing there looking. And she does this really, really fucking badass thing where, uh, I don't know if you can, she just raises her foot. <sighs> Like that, exactly like that, and then her foot hits the hits the street, the concrete, the street, and it just <laughs> cracks using a telekinesis, cracks along the road, and it causes a, a cave in on the road ahead of them, so it causes them to turn around, and they see Carrie, They're like look, it's her, it's Carrie, run her down, run her down, Billy, kill her, because I got this, I got this, and he goes to do it, and then she and Carrie just does and it stops the car like right here and caves in the front which causes um, Billy to of course go forward crack his nose onto the steering wheel and probably jammed a bone up into his brain because he dies or probably broke his neck and then she's like she's like Billy Billy he's dead and um, basically Carrie has the back end of the car suspended up this way floats you know levitates the car and it moves out of the way and it lets the car go and it crashes right into the uh, in the gas station, you know, where you fill up the you know the pumps. Hits that, and it causes uh, Chris Harginson, yeah, Chris Harginson to go into the the windshield and partially have her face right here through the glass. It's all in slow motion. It's a beautiful gore effect where you see the excuse me, excuse me. You see um, shards of glass enter her face. It's just gorgeous. All this blood, very nasty, and I just loved it. And my brother, you know, I was watching with him, and I was just like, we're like, oh, it was just us in the theaters, mind you. Add that, there was no one else watching. Maybe because it was the time of day when we saw it. But in any case, in any case, um, so then Carrie, you know, she's like dying, and then Carrie just turns around. As she's walking away, she turns around and uses her power to collapse one of the telephone lines to hit the, you know, the, the car and the, um, you know, to fall in the car and the, uh, the, the, the gas pumps and causes an explosion and they die in it. You know, of course, how they do in movies nowadays. And she's walking away from the explosion. It just looked a bad ass. So now she goes home. The mother had broken out of the uh, the closet. And uh, there are some differences in the ending. Um, let's just say, because I don't want to spoil it, let's just say that uh, um, 
uh, Sue Snell manages to pay a visit. And let's just leave it at that. So all in all, I'm going to give my final score now, and then there's going to come some spoilers in here uh, about the ending. Um, all in all, I truly, truly enjoyed it. There were elements, like I said at the beginning, there were elements of the original that I, that I enjoyed more than the remake, and at the same time, there were elements of the remake that I enjoyed more than, than the original. Ultimately, what it comes down to now are which elements do you prefer that, you know, between the two that were important to you? Well, when it finally comes down to it, I'm going to be quite honest with you folks, and I know I'm probably going to get a lot of hate on this. The elements that I enjoyed in the remake outweighed the thing, the elements that I enjoyed from the original more so than, you know, than the remake. It outweighed, you know, the, the parts that I liked about the, the original. So I liked the parts in the remake more. And it was Chloe's performance, even though I thought Piper Laurie did, did a, a, a more grander job at portraying the mother, although um, uh, Julianne Moore was still fantastic in a role. But I loved Chloe's performance. I loved the kills a lot more in here. It seemed like, it, you know, after seeing this one now, it seemed like all the deaths went kind of like in a blink almost in the original. It was kind of, um, you know, it was kind of like a flash. You know, it didn't really, wasn't as satisfying as, as the kills in here. They were just all great. They prolonged that a bit and showing her walking down the streets and everything for a brief moment and everything setting a flame. I think she has like a type of pyrokinesis as well and other powers as well too, which I'm not going to get into. Sorry, sorry. It's a minor spoiler. But um, uh, anyways, um... So those are the elements that I enjoyed more. The remake, I enjoyed the horror elements more, um, and the music more, and the mother more, of course. But at the in the end, the other elements were enough to do it for me. That you know, I think I gave the original Carrie a four out of five. Well, for Carrie the remake, I'm gonna have to give it a four point two five. So, point two five more better than you know, slightly more better than the original, in my personal opinion, because. Uh, it was enough to do it for me. The kills, Chloe's performance, the effects, of, of course, you know, well, you're, you're just all about effects. Well, for this film, I guess I guess it was, you know, because the effects ultimately uh, uh, were, were, were tied to the deaths, you know. So, you know, uh, it, it made the deaths a lot more satisfying and, and more grander to watch and just the way it was shot for the, it, it became like almost like an action sequence. And if I could be quite honest with you, uh, she almost reminded me of a, a, a of a, a of a Sith Lord, a Sith apprentice in the making. You know, she she was doing Darth Sidious proud the Emperor. If he was there, he would definitely recruit. Excuse me, Carrie White to be a Sith Lord. That was the only thing that was missing from her. Uh, was a lightsaber. Was a red lightsaber. Uh, then she would have truly, you know, and then of course go through the training. And she she was a. A Sith apprentice and even a Sith Lord in the making, and uh, you know the prequels. Even though uh, I didn't really care for Phantom Menace so much, and and I thought Clone uh, uh, the Clone Wars, uh, what is it? Was it called or Attack of the Clones? I thought it was uh, okay, um, but then I really loved uh, uh, Revenge of the Sith, of course, because being with Vader. And even though I knew how it was going to end, I was still rooting for Vader. I was still rooting for the Emperor. Well, in this one, I was rooting for Chloe. I was rooting for Carrie. Sorry, not Chloe. Chloe, played by uh, Chloe. You know, I was rooting for Carrie. Okay, so those elements were enough to do it for me. Uh, you know, to to make me like it. You know, a little bit more than than the uh, original. So four point two five. Now, that's the end of this review, and I'm going to get to one minor little, one kind of major spoiler here at the end. So if you don't want to hear it, that was it. So thank you so much and farewell. Okay, so stop it right there. Now you have been warned. Now we're coming to a little spoiler here. When it comes to the end, we here? Okay. In my personal opinion, I feel as if that uh, she didn't die. Carrie did not die. Sure, you know, it showcased another one of her features as if, you know, like I said, the pyrokinesis thing, you know, where she was heating up the, the lock and you know, locking her mother in. That was kind of, you know, interesting uh, power and kind of new, and I kind of thought it was pretty cool. Another thing is when Sue Snell came in, she went like this, and she, at first she was thinking about killing her, Sue Snell, but, you know, I guess she felt there was a life inside of her. She could, she felt like there was a baby in her, 
So she almost has like some kind of telepathic power as well, as well as uh, like an overall telekinetic, you know, psychokinesis or something, a pyro psychokinesis and empathy uh, uh, and, and telepathy of, of some sort, because she was able to sense the baby. She goes, oh, you have a life growing inside of you. She's like, what? Because of course, from screwing um, Tommy Ross, that one scene, you know, so apparently uh, she got pregnant from that. Pushes her out of the, the house. The whole uh, house collapses on um, on Carrie. You know, the usual thing, you know, impaling the mother. Um, in the original, I liked that impalement better when she was crucified, the mother, and the music was freaking. The way she was like, she's like oh, oh, you know, and dies, you know, like she was enjoying it. In here, she just sort of like died. But I do like how um, uh, how they did it when she was about to stab uh, 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 Carrie in the face with the knife. She stops it. And what Carrie does was she all the all the forks and spoons and all the silverware and and, and uh, carrot peelers and everything, and forks and all that knives fly up in a circle around the mother and she's like oh shit like she knows what's coming she's like I'm sorry mama and all this stuff spin and, and jabs into her her chest and kills her that way and she gets impaled you know not quite as as scary as the original and that's one of the things I enjoyed. Uh, more so in the original as well, as well as how you know this, how she was attempting to kill her daughter, you know, with the you know, cross and all that. Uh, but still, very cool death scene. Um, so of course, the mother dies, doesn't kill Sue Snell, sends her out flying. The whole house collapses on Carrie. Uh, the next scene, there's like a courtroom scene and saying, you know, I know what I saw, Carrie. Uh, she was just a kid like us, but uh, she possessed some sort of uh, telekinetic abilities that, you know, we can't understand it. You know, I wasn't imagining things. Okay, she takes a, a walk through the grave, and there you see Carrie's tombstone. And, of course, there's uh, Carrie White Burns in Hell and an arrow pointing down into her grave. She goes to put the flowers. But nothing happens. No hand pops out like in the uh, original. But then... You see the tombstone start cracking, you know, and the earth is splitting open. Okay, so she's still alive, folks. In my personal opinion, my brother disagrees. He says, "No, she's dead." I go, "I, I think she's alive," because the tombstone was cracking. Uh, Julianne Moore and, and when she was on Ellen, she even said possibly there might even be a sequel. Of course, I'm not going to be in it, but you know, there could be a sequel. I think she's alive. And Sonny said, "Well, okay." Let me, Okay, if she's buried underground, uh, she has to go through the autopsy. Okay, so let's let's just say this. This is my brother. He said, let's just say somehow she happened to survive the house collapsing on her. Let's just say she created a telekinetic bubble and it shielded herself. Okay, let's just say that happened. She was knocked unconscious. Um, and people thought she was dead somehow. Um, she's So you're telling me in order for her to be underground, though, she had to go through the autopsy. You're telling me she survived the autopsy. And, and then and then I said, um, well, how did the thing, you know, how, how did the tombstone crack? Why, why did it break? Maybe she's not really under the ground. Maybe the body was never recovered. Maybe it's just like an empty grave in there. You know, they put a dummy in there. You know how they do that sometimes, like a body fill, fill in. Uh, but he doesn't think so. I And I, I was thinking maybe she was just hiding in the trees, you know, behind, you know, behind her tombstone and she's pissed and you know so it's kind of up for interpretation I think uh, she survived so, uh, my brother says um, if she's truly under the ground there's no way she of course survived the autopsy but I believe she uh, created a telekinetic bubble uh, to protect herself and uh, and uh, escaped that way and there was no body that was recovered and uh, they just put uh, like a, a dummy in there or something okay so there we go I don't know if you guys uh, seen the movie tell me what your thoughts are sorry I kind of made this linger on a little bit but okay so see you guys